This video shows you how to enter a standpipe system in the FIRE program. Click New to start a new project. Click Save to save the project. You should save your project right away since doing so can protect your data from being lost. We'll name this project Standpipe Video. Reopen the General Project Data window. Click the System Data tab. Here's the diagram for this standpipe project. The node numbers are shown in bold black text. This is node 10. It is the inflow node that connects to the city water main. The elevation values are shown in light blue text next to the node number. Node 20 is our reference node for elevation, so it's at an elevation of 0. The outflow nodes are 30, 40, and 50. These nodes are where fire hoses can be connected. The outflow in each of these nodes is 250 GPM. The inside hose stream allow input lets us enter the total outflow from our three inside hoses, which is 750 GPM. This value is not used in calculations, but is shown on the reports for documentation. Set the default material to be number 4, Schedule 40, Wet Steel. For the default K factor, we need to use the calculator to find the value needed for our hose connections of 250 GPM flow and 100 PSI of residual pressure each. Click the Open Sprinkler K factor calculator button. Enter 100 PSI of residual pressure and a 250 GPM flow rate. The resulting K factor is 25. Click the Close button to copy the value of 25 back to the default K factor input. Since this is a standpipe system with no sprinklers, we need to change the primary type of discharge from sprinkler to hose. The hose size should be 2.5 inches. Set the hazard description to light hazard. Set the hose system type to wet, since the system will remain filled with water when inactive. Now let's enter some hydrant test data into these three inputs. These values will be used to help generate the hydraulic supply demand graph report. Now let's open the Enter Edit Pipe data window so we can enter the pipes in our standpipe system. Our first pipe is this one that goes from node 10, the city water main, to node 20. The elevation of node 10 is minus 5 feet while the elevation at node 20 will be our reference elevation of zero. This pipe has two elbows and one gate valve. Its length is 200 feet. The beginning node is 10 and the ending node is 20. The diameter is 4 inches and the length is 200 feet. The elevation of node 10 is 5 feet lower than our reference node, 20. So enter minus 5 for the elevation of node 10. Now we can enter the standard fittings. There are two elbows, so we can type 2E for them. This pipe also has a gate valve, so also enter G for that fitting. The text should then be 2EG. Our second pipe goes from node 20 to node 30. The diameter is 4 inches and the length is 45 feet. We can see here that the pipe from node 20 to 30 has one T-fitting and one gate valve fitting, so the fitting text we will enter will be TG. Node 30 is one of our outflow nodes with a hose connection, so assign the default K factor of 25 by clicking in the input and pressing D on the keyboard. The text DFLT will be inserted and replaced later by 25. Node 30 is at an elevation of 45 feet with respect to our reference node of 20, which is at an elevation of 0. 
Remember that in pipe 2 we have one T fitting and one gate valve, so enter TG for the fitting text. Pipe 3 will be this one from node 20 to node 40. Node 40 is at an elevation of 35 feet. And pipe 3 has one elbow fitting and one gate valve, so we'll enter EG for the fitting text. By the way, the straight outlet at node 20 does not require a fitting code. Only the angled outlet that goes to node 30 requires specifying a T fitting. The length of pipe 3 is 250 feet of horizontal pipe plus 35 feet of vertical pipe for a total of 285 feet. Node 40 is another outflow node for a fire hose, so press D to use the default k-factor of 25. One elbow and one gate valve for pipe 3 means we need to enter EG for the fitting text. Pipe 4 goes from node 40 to node 50. There are no fittings to enter. The elevations are 35 feet and 45 feet, and the pipe length is 10 feet. Node 50 is our final outflow node, so enter D to use our default k-factor of 25. We need to set one of our nodes to be the inflow node that connects to the water supply. In this system, node 10 connects to the city water main. To mark our inflow node, first click in the box for node 10. And now click the Mark Inflow Node button. A small arrow image will then be shown to the left of the input. We're almost ready to calculate results. Open the calculation window. We want to use demand mode, so select that option if it's not already selected. From searching the web, we can see that the NFPA minimum design pressure at the hydraulically most remote node for a 2.5 inch hose valve outlet for a standpipe system is 100 psi. Enter 100 psi for the minimum residual pressure at the hydraulically most demanding node. For the maximum nodal pressure imbalance input, we can enter a somewhat small value of 0.001. Since our system is pretty simple, and it should be easy enough for the program to calculate a solution for it quickly. A value of 4 should be good for both of the oscillation damping factor inputs. Click the Calculate button. We can see that the 100 psi of residual pressure that we requested for the hydraulically most demanding node was calculated for node 50. And notice that all other nodes have calculated residual pressures that are higher than 100. Let's take a look at the reports. So click Quick Preview Reports. Here we can again see that node 50 is our hydraulically most demanding node and has 100 psi of residual pressure and 250 GPM of flow. This graph shows us that the supply curve data, the thick blue line, is higher than the demand curve data, the thin maroon line, at the calculated flow rate. Thanks for watching.